Welcome guys and girls to this lecture on Helm and Charts. First thing first though, when I first started uh, working on Helm chart, I thought chart had something to do with graph. Like I surely thought <laughs> this Helm chart thing is gonna give me some cool graphs and stuff. Because this is the Wikipedia, what a chart means. Look, a chart is a graphical representation of data. So if you guys and girls are thinking the same way, nope. Helm charts have nothing to do with graphical charts or dashboards, not remotely close. All right, now that's out of the way. Let's understand what it really is. So let's start with looking at what does it solve. Uh, let's say you have to deploy a WordPress. So what are some of the components of a WordPress? Uh, so you'll have a web server and database server for sure. And maybe you are running Nginx as your web server in let's say three different pods to make it highly available. Likewise for database, you are running MySQL uh, in three different pods. You have service in front of database and one other service in front of web server. Now think of how you are going to implement this in Kubernetes. Uh, so till this time, we, we know about the manifest files, right? So you'll probably have a manifest file for web server let's say webserver.yaml, and then you'll have a manifest file for database, another file for the front-end service, another file for the back-end service, etc. So this is uh, super painful, right? Because every time you have to change something, uh, you have to go and change multiple files, uh, you have to manage them together. If you deploy one thing, you have to make sure that you deploy the other dependent parts as well. And it's like all over the place. So maintaining this is like a nightmare. You can merge these four YAML files uh, into one YAML file. However, that's not really that elegant. Uh, also, and this is your application, so you can merge all this and make one YAML file. Uh, but let's say you want to install a Jenkins, right? Or maybe a Logstash Kibana, right? So if you want to search for those uh, installations, you will get multiple files and then you have to install it separately. So Helm solves this problem. Uh, so what it does is it puts whatever is required to install this whole WordPress solution in one package and then you just have to run one command such as helm install and then a name and then the name of the package and it's gonna go and install all this stuff. And that's not it. It also brings in some added value. So, so let's look into that. Okay, so uh, as we discussed, helm is a package manager for Kubernetes. Uh, you can think of it as like a doing a yum install or a pip install for a popular package. Uh, so not only it installs the package, but it also installs all the dependencies and all that stuff. And the Helm packages are called charts. So a chart is a collection of files that describe all your Kubernetes resources. So a single chart, you can use it to deploy something simple or something complex, like, like the WordPress example uh, we saw. So Helm charts can help defining, installing and upgrading complex Kubernetes application. So Helm charts can be versioned, shared and published. And then uh, these last two points are kind of added benefits. So Helm charts can accept input parameter. Uh, so let's say you are spinning up a database pod and uh, you, you need for database pod, uh, you need uh, like a administrator, user ID, administrator password, all that stuff. So if you spin up a pod with kubectl, uh, you have to run some extra commands afterwards uh, to set all this uh, admin user ID password. With Helm, you can actually pass parameters uh, into the package. Uh, so kubectl cannot do this, right? Because kubectl, when you do kubectl apply minus f and a file name, there's no way to pass a parameter. Uh, so to do that, you need to install some template engine such as customize, uh, Jinja, etc. Now the last point, I, I love it. So I'm gonna show it to you guys and girls as well. There are tons of popular packages already available. Uh, so Helm is open source. So they have literally thousands of uh, very, very popular softwares already packaged. 
So this is the Helm website. So you can just Google uh, Kubernetes Helm and this will be the first website to come up. Uh, so the package manager, so I'm gonna scroll down. Get charged. So if I click this, so you can see uh, there are literally thousands of charts already available. So you can see the scroll bar. This is like, this is like a lot of good stuff. So let's say you want to install Jenkins. Uh, so you can take this table slash Jenkins and some other stuff is also available from the third party. You just run one command, it's gonna go install Jenkins. How about uh, WordPress? Okay, so Bitnami WordPress and there are more as well. So this is, uh, this is from the Helm open source repository and there are even more sources for this. And this is all open source, so if you create something cool, other people around the world might find it useful, uh, you can contribute to Helm as well. Okay, going back to the charts files. Uh, so generally the structure is like this. There is a metadata file, chart.yaml, and the default config file, and then all the manifests are under templates folder. Services are under service.yaml, and then the deployment is in deployment.yaml. Okay, so let's do a Helm on EKS demo. We are going to demo the Nginx uh, web server. So what the Nginx Helm chart do is it installs a web server as well as it installs a service uh, for you as well. Uh, so first things first, you have to install Helm. Uh, so if you scroll down in the Helm website, uh, you will see how you can uh, install Helm. Uh, so for this demo, I'm running in my uh, Windows, so I'm just gonna run this. However, there are multiple ways and then um, you can click this installation and it's gonna open up this page. Uh, so in this page, uh, it gives you additional ways to install Helm. Uh, so if you're in Linux, you can run a snap command to install or you can do it from a script from any operating system really. Uh, you can run curl, uh, get the package, and then run gethelm.sh. Uh, or you can just do clone it from git, and then you can just run the make command to do it. Okay, so, but like I said, uh, I am running it on Windows. So when you install uh, something in the Windows, you have to run your terminal as administrator. Okay, going to uh, paste the command. Yes, I want to install this. Okay, uh, it's done. So I'm gonna minimize this, go back to my regular terminal where I am not the administrator. Okay, I'm back to my normal non-administrator terminal. So if you want to see if Helm is actually installed or not successfully, uh, you run Helm version. Okay, so if you get back something, that means Helm is installed uh, well and good. Okay, so after Helm is installed, it, act it actually uh, brings in some uh, charts. It installs some chart as part of the Helm installation. So if you do Helm search repo, so it's gonna give you all the stuff that's kind of uh, installed already. So if you want to search for a specific thing, let's, let's say Helm, search repo WordPress. Okay, so you can see WordPress is part of uh, the repo already that came with the installation. But if we let search uh, Helm search repo Nginx. As you can see, these are not really our regular Nginx server. This is like the ingress, proxy, uh, engine, engine ingress con controller and cube Lego. Uh, so we don't want that. So how are you gonna search the hub? Remember the hub that we showed in the last video? So this is the hub, right? That we saw. So to search the hub, what you're gonna do is Helm search hub and then search for Nginx. Okay, so we can see this uh, hub.helm.sa charts bitnami nginx, right? And then chart for nginx server. So how are you gonna add that to your uh, local repository? So this is what I do. So generally bitnami has a lot of cool stuff. Um, so 
how do you add everything from Bitnami? Okay, go to the Helm Hub, then click this charts icon. And then I go to, uh, like for this case, Bitnami. So here we are. It would be better if it is uh, ordered by the name, but whatever. Okay, here you can search Nginx. Bitnami Nginx. Okay, and then Helm, Helm repo add Bitnami. So this is the command. And uh, this is for the particular uh, chart after you get the repo. Okay, let's go back. Let's clear our screen. Let's do Helm repo add. So this is gonna add all the charts from Bitnami into your repository. Okay, let's do that. It has been added. Now if we do Helm search repo Nginx, now you can see, we can see the Bitnami charts, right? So one thing to note, uh, this repository <laughs> is not really something which is stored in your machine. It's like a metadata. Even though it's saying that uh, you have it in your repo, um, you can install it and then it will install in your Kubernetes cluster, uh, but it's not like you have it in your local machine. Uh, however, uh, let's pull this Bitnami Nginx in our local machine and then uh, take a look at the different files. I'm not gonna go too deep because Helm in, in itself is like a separate course. You, we can spend hours in it, but uh, just for uh, fun, let's uh, download one of the charts. So this is how you download Helm pool, and then you give the name of the chart, in this case, bitnami slash nginx, and then uh, it downloads a tar file. If you wanted to unzip it, you uh, pass this option dash dash untar equal to true. And then if I do ls, you can give a directory else it's gonna um, get downloaded in the current folder. Uh, so you can see this nginx is downloaded. So if I bring my Windows Explorer, you can see nginx and then uh, it has the templates folder, which has the service.yaml and the deployment.yaml. And then there's a bunch of other abstraction stuff um, under the actual Nginx folder. So this service and deployment, uh, there are a lot of abstraction in here. So it's not like it's our regular deployment.yaml, uh, like, like this is our regular deployment.yaml uh, that, we, that we are familiar with. However, um, this is the deployment.yaml that came with the Helm chart, so you can see there's a lot of abstraction. It grabs the value from the template file, uh, this, that. So, okay, so now what we're gonna do is uh, install it. So before we install it, let's run kubectl get all. So you can see there is nothing going on in this uh, EKS cluster. So let's install this Nginx Helm install and then the name of the chart nginx okay you have to give you have to pass a name here how about helm nginx okay here we go you can also give dash dash generate dash name and it will generate a name for you uh, but i passed the name okay so it did it so if we run kubectl get all now, okay, so you can see it has a pod which is running Helm Nginx, a text from the name, and more importantly, it created a service, a Helm Nginx, and the type is load balancer. So from the services lecture, you guys and girls know like a load balancer, a service type uh, exposes the underlying pod into uh, internet. Uh, and then this is the external IP and then the port and then the deployment, we have a deployment and then replica set. Okay, I'm gonna see kubectl get service. Uh, so it takes a little bit of time for the load balancer to come up. So I'm just gonna do kubectl describe service. Okay, after we did the kubectl uh, describe service, 
So you can see this load balancer ingress is the external address where the traffic can come in and then the endpoints, these are the two nodes that it is hitting. Okay, let's try again, kubectl get svc. This external IP is the URL uh, where we can hit the load balancer from internet. Uh, so let's grab this value and then uh, paste it uh, in my Chrome. Okay, let's paste this. There you go, welcome to Nginx. Uh, so it's now hitting the underlying Nginx pods. So if you had to do this outside of chart, you have to create a service YAML with service type load balancer, map everything, and then you have to have a deployment YAML and bunch of stuff. Uh, so there's one more thing I want to show you before I end this video. So if I go back to the Helm Hub and to the Nginx from Bitnami, uh, you will see it has the parameters. Uh, so you can pass all these uh, parameters uh, to the chart. Uh, so instead of taking all the default values of the port and stuff, you can pass all this stuff. Uh, but I did not want to make this demo video very complicated because this is the first Helm uh, demo. <laughs> all right, guys and girls, that is the video. If you like this video, please smash that like button and click subscribe. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.